Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hannah Olson and I live in Minnesota with my husband and our three children, Sophie, Soren, and Svea. Sophie is six, Soren is almost four, and Svea is seven months old. I love sharing about all things motherhood, homemaking, and homeschooling, which is the topic for today's video. Today I wanted to sit down and share with you what we use for math supplies and math manipulatives for our homeschool. Now we have pretty young learners. I have a kindergartner, Sophie's in kindergarten this year, and Soren is in his second year of preschool, but we have been homeschooling for multiple years. Sophie is on her technically fourth year of being homeschooled because that's just the way that I like to start things. I don't push them very rigorously, academically speaking from a young age, but I do like to infuse that structure in the preschool sit down and work with mama time ever since they are the school year that they turn three. So that's a little bit of background for you. I'm also a former elementary school teacher, so I have experience in that realm as well. I especially did Title I, which for us was small group math and reading interventions. So I definitely am interested in this kind of thing. I love pulling really good supplies and manipulatives that are engaging for our kids, but also that teach them crucial skills. So hopefully this video will be helpful for you when it comes to finding and then pulling out good math manipulatives and supplies for especially younger learners. I'm going to be sharing our math supplies in no particular order and not really grouped by skill. So hopefully it'll still make sense to you and be fun for you to write down maybe a list of whatever you might want to pick up for your own kids. But also I will link everything down in the description box below. These math supplies we do not use on a daily basis. Some of them a little bit more on a daily basis, but uh, most of these are things that we rotate through and I love to pull out. I don't have these stored far away from our homeschool area. I keep them in the downstairs cabinet, which is right by our kitchen table because that is where I keep our other homeschool bins and baskets and supplies. So these are definitely things we reach for and are tried and true for our family. All right, let's jump in. I'm going to start with something that is not technically a manipulative or activity, just to get it out of the way and to talk about it with you. This is called Mathematical Reasoning. This is the book called Beginning Two, which our son Soren, who is soon to be four, is working through this year. And he's actually about halfway done with this book, and this one is specifically for age four. I love these Mathematical Reasoning books because they are so well made. They are so engaging for young, young learners. They even have a book that is for age three, which Soren worked through last year and had a blast to doing. These mathematical reasoning books are made by a company called the Critical Thinking Company, and we've only done the mat mathematical reasoning books through them, but I'm tempted to look into this company and see if I want to buy any of their other workbooks just because they have been phenomenal for us. These books cover content that is agreed upon by the, I think it's the National Council of Math Teachers. So we've got, yep, it's the standards here in the front cover, and there are things like algebra, geometry, measurement, and uh, probability, number and operation all sorts of things and you'll kind of get a little peek at what you're doing at the top of each page they'll tell you if you're doing a an early algebra skill or geometry skill that kind of thing I love this book Soren loves this book and is so proud of his work in it we just do a few pages every day this is something I would say we reach for every day and I highly recommend these mathematical reasoning books even if you find another preschool curriculum that you like like we do the good and the beautiful for preschool we also pair it with other things I love piecing things together and this is our more hefty math focus for the preschool years but it again is so fun and they do have a book designed for age three too. Here's a fun math manipulative. I feel like I'm going to trip over the word manipulative today because I'm going to say it so much. This, these I call our number peg boards and it comes in a cute little, um, I don't know, pull top case <laughs> box, but basically there are these little wooden, isn't that cute? Little wooden cards. If you like Montessori style stuff that is, you know, wooden and really tactile, these are very fun. And they just have the numbers one through 10 on these peg boards with holes and yeah, I guess you can see we've got little dowels or pegs that come in the storage side of this box. It's very easy for a child to work on on their own. But of course, if you want to teach them different numbers, you can, as the parent, 
go through these sitting with your child. I, at this point, have Soren practice counting during some of his independent work time, and he loves these. It's just, again, a really great way for your child to have that tactile or sensory focus when they're doing math. It really helps with counting skills. So I love this and the awesome news about this, I can't get it closed now, is it's available on Amazon. That's where I got it. It doesn't look like something that you would get on Amazon. It looks like maybe an Etsy shop kind of thing. It says Wolves Woodworks, but I will definitely link that down below so you can get these little number peg boards for your own family or just look into them further. If you have children who love sensory activities, which I would say most kids do, we've got this pop it hundreds chart it goes all the way from one to 100 and the numbers are all let's see the numbers are all written on it or printed on each little bubble and it's really fun for kids it's fun for adults too to pop every single bubble and this would really help for things like skip counting if you're practicing that counting by tens they could just go down the right side or just counting by ones which i've worked with soren on especially this school year and it's just a really fun little activity. You can bring it in the car. You can bring it pretty much anywhere. Your child could work with this during little independent work times as well. I just, I really love it. It's simple, but a fun thing to have in your toolkit. This next one, I know I've mentioned in a past blog post or two, as well as my curriculum picks videos from this year, which I can also link down below if you want to see a full swath of all the curriculum and activities and workbooks that I've chosen for our kids for this year. But this is called Tiny Polka Dot. It's a little math game. I can open it up for you. Basically, it's about 16 games in one. We haven't played all 16 games because they vary in difficulty. All right, here we go. We've got some cards with dots, like what's on a die. We have dots or cards with numbers, cards with 10 frames, and there are all sorts of matching games and activities with directions in this little box for you to do with your child. And you can start from a very young age so that they are matching different dot patterns, like irregular dot patterns too, not just what a die looks looks like. So we've really enjoyed this tiny polka dot math game. It's a good one to just have on your shelf or in your homeschool cupboard. An item that we have really enjoyed, especially this year, but in past years, is called a Wreck and Wreck. Wreck and Wreck is spelled R-E-K and then the letter N and then R-E-K usually. So a Wreck and Wreck looks kind of like an abacus. I am not you know, super educated on using an abacus, but I would definitely say this is a great start if you want to even go in that direction. This only goes up to 20. We've got 10 here and 10 on the upper bar, and it is perfect for just that sensory way to count by ones, but then of course they're grouped by color so you can count by fives, and then start to represent different numbers like teen numbers and um, do basic addition and subtraction and just show it in a really tangible way for your child. Soren has really enjoyed this. Sophie has surprised me with some of her um, tricks and tips that she's figured out on her own for how to represent different numbers. So a Wreck and Wreck is a pretty inexpensive and a pretty small, simple thing to have in your toolkit for homeschool. And it's just another great way for your child to learn how to represent and view numbers. So I would highly recommend having a Wreck and Wreck. Excuse this bag, it's well loved, but we've got a geo board in this bag. If you haven't used one, it's basically a wooden board that has metal pegs. They're uh, not sharp or anything. It's not like an actual nail. Um, and it comes with rubber bands of different sizes and you just use it to create all sorts of different shapes or patterns or yeah, I would say mostly shapes. What I like about our geo board is we've got little cards that came with it. This says leaf and then they've got little designs or it's kind of like basic pictorial picture related directions that your child can follow to try to recreate that shape. But a geo board is a really great way to focus on geometry, of course, and just building different shapes, especially since the rows are very straight. It helps your child to maybe build a square when they otherwise might struggle to draw some straight lines. It's also a very tactile or hands-on thing to work with, and our kids have really loved having a geo board. I feel like they're kind of an essential when it comes to teaching geometry. This is a little smaller, but we've got a little 10 frame playing cards set and it's for grades K through two. There are a couple of games I think that are outlined in here. I pretty much love doing matching with them or just using them to show different numbers on a 10 frame. 10 frames are such a great way to represent numbers, of course, and have kids understand what a number truly like what a quantity truly looks like. I think you can get the gist of this, but it's a really great little 
playing card set for 10 frames. This next one is so cute and I definitely got it for the aesthetically pleasing aspect, but the kids have enjoyed it too. This is from an Etsy shop. It's a blank 10 frame. So we're going to continue with the 10 frames um, theme here for a moment. And it comes with these little wooden cards, of course, zero through 10. And your child just lays it on this in this little tray and then they count using acorns. These are real on the top and then the bottom is not real. Um, so that they don't go bad or whatever, <laughs> I assume. But we, you just count with the little acorns and it is so cute. So we keep this all just in a bin from Walmart or something. So we've got all that together. We don't pull that one out as much as we should. I wanna pull this out again. I think Soren especially will be really excited about it. Oh boy, I just dumped the box. But we're going to continue with the 10 frame theme here. We've got these little 10 frame boards from Learning Resources and they've got foam, but they're magnetic. Uh, f magnetic foam dots that you can use to fill in the 10 frames. We have a set of four of these paddles. There's a single 10 frame on the back and then going up to 20, of course, on this side. So you can represent teen numbers, which tend to be tricky for littles. The kids really like these because, well, they're on a paddle, which I guess adds to the novelty of it. But basically you can hide your answer and then everyone shows their answer at once. So people aren't really looking at each other's answers if you're kind of doing a group math lesson or if you just want to show it to your child like you're the teacher and you've got the answer shown on your little paddle. So I really have enjoyed these. These could be great for a classroom, of course, but we've used them in our homeschool. I purchased them for our homeschool time and yeah, it's a really cute way to focus on some 10 framework. We've loved something for many years now called Mighty Mind. We have the magnetic version of Mighty Mind and it's basically like tangrams. If you grew up with tangrams or you remember using little shapes like triangles and squares and hexagons inside an outline to create other shapes, this is like that. I will show you though how it works. So it comes with a bunch of cards in the set and they increase in difficulty. This is card number five. And I don't know if there's like 30 cards or something like that, but the earlier cards, they tell you what shapes you need, kind of in a speech bubble, to create this shape at the bottom. So then Soren, for instance, would try to find a blue triangle and a red triangle and a yellow square, and he'd put the square in the middle and the triangles on the sides. It is such a fun and engaging activity for kids. Really, really helps, of course, with spatial thinking and critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, because if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit and usually that's self-correcting, not always, but I have really enjoyed doing these. Here's 26, 26 looks a lot harder, and so you would have to find the shapes on your own and they won't give it to you. So Mighty Mind is a really fun one. It would also, I would say, make a really fun Christmas gift. Our next item comes in this well-loved box that says $5 because I got it from a garage sale. This is from Constructive Playthings and I will show you what's inside. It's just a matching game of different dots and then numerals. So your child, oh sorry, it's fish. I forgot to tell you it's fish. Your child matches together a fish's tail and, oh sorry, it's not dots either. Oh my goodness. I think you get the idea though. It's different fish scales and then the tail, kind of hard to see here, but the tail says the number. We've got fish of all different colors and it does have the number word, but for those younger learners, it also has the numeral, which is really nice and it does match by color. So this is great for younger learners, whether you want them to just sit over there while you're working with the older kids and they need to match some fish together. It's actually really fun to match these together. It's another sensory friendly activity and they can match just by color if they're especially young. And I think your older kids would definitely learn right away that you are matching by color, but it is still a really good way to represent numbers and match them together with their numerals. This next little set is called Counting Ladybug Counting Stones. It's these cute little, they're kind of heavy, not quite like a paperweight, but they are heavier, maybe made of out of that melamine or something like that. But they have two of each ladybug, uh, numbers zero through 10. And so you can match by counting the dots on each ladybug. Each ladybug has, besides their match, has a different number of dots and they are really cute, really fun for kids to hold and play with, you know, pretend play, make believe play as well. 
This is from a company called Yellow Door, and I will link it below if I can find it. This one I got for $2, it says, from a garage sale, and I was thrilled to find a garage sale that had some awesome homeschool stuff. So definitely little counters like this can be a really fun part of your homeschool. All right, these last three activities are kind of a bonus. These are related to math. A lot of things in life are related to math and a lot of uh, play and pretending that kids do is truly related to math. So these are magnet tiles. I'm sure you've heard of magnetic tiles, whether Picasso tiles or magnet. Magnet tiles is what we have and there are just other magnetic tiles out there. I got our first set of magnet tiles through an Amazon Prime sale and then every year, and then I've slowed down now, but every year afterwards I started adding to our collection when I found them on sale or for things like Christmas, we would add just a little bit more. And now I would say we've built up an awesome collection of magnet tiles and Soren especially builds with these all of the time. He's constantly making tractors and trucks and combines because my husband farms out of these. And of course they're made out of all these different shapes. So it really helps your child with spatial thinking skills and geometry and just recognizing that if you put two triangles together it would fit against the side of a square this way all sorts of really awesome skills that you can't just explain or talk to your child about they have to really work with their hands and so I did want to include magnet tiles here because just having your children even younger children while you're working with the older kids play with magnet tiles is still so valuable for them. The second little bonus activity I wanted to include here is called Teddy Bear Mix and Match, or that's what we call it, Teddy Bear Mix and Match. This was part of the preschool level for Sunlight Curriculum, and I actually, I like to pull from Sunlight Curriculum and use it kind of as a book list. I don't purchase the entire curriculum for each level, and I infuse it into our homeschool curriculums because we also pull from the good and the beautiful. But this was in the preschool school level and you can buy it as a standalone thing possibly on Amazon as well and it's such a cute I'll show you it's such a cute little teddy bear mix and match game of course I don't have really a good match oh I do have a match basically it's all these little thick cardboard teddy bears and each one has one match and each teddy bear is doing a different thing some of them are like gummy bears some are actual teddy bears here's a baby bear there's like a panda bear in here. So there's a whole variety of bears and it's a really cute little preschool activity and really great for sorting and matching. So definitely keep this in mind if you have someone in your family who is in preschool, maybe needs something to do while the bigger kids are doing school, or if you just want to work with your child on some matching skills. This I wanted to include because it's been really fun for our family. And my final bonus activity, again I need to apologize for the weird bag situation going on here. It's tricky to store and maybe you will have a better way of storing it, but this has worked for us. We found on Teachers Pay Teachers, which which by the way is a wonderful place to find resources, we found this logic activity pack. And this is for ages, I think it said four through seven. So that's perfect for younger learners. And I'll show you a couple of these game boards, but first I just wanna explain. It's about, I think it's 16 different game boards and it, they increase in difficulty. So it's not like they're all for just four year olds or all for seven year olds. They definitely work for a wide span of abilities and ages. Basically each game board has a grid on it and you have to, at the intersection of two items, Listed, find which item would fit those categories. I'm sorry for the terrible explanation. I can show it to you much better. Since I've got game board 11 here, I will start with that, but I will try to show you an easier one too. Basically, you have butterflies all down the side of different colors, and then you've got different sizes of just circles, but it's showing you that something's going to increase in size. Then in a little baggie here, I have, I've labeled it as game 11, I've got the different pieces. Now the different game pieces for this specific board are butterflies of different sizes in different colors. So your child then would have to figure out where does the smallest purple butterfly go and affix it to there. I actually bought Velcro dots and have done all of that work to get it to stay better because then I found it doesn't slide around for my children and it's less frustrating that way. And then you would find a larger and larger and larger butterfly on each card. I don't know if this is, this is probably the largest one. So then when your child has filled up the entire grid here, it's easy for you as the parent to just check their work. I wanna show you a, an easier one though, because this is game 11 out of 16. Okay, here is game two. 
As you can see, there are only four choices. This is the second game board. Each of the game pieces, there are only four, has a different combination of birds. So then your child has to think of where would the combination of a red bird and blue bird go? And that would be in this intersection here of those two categories. And I, I love this so much because I feel like it gives your kids a sense of satisfaction when they figured out something like this. I actually grew up in an elementary school doing logic puzzles or logic problems, they called it. And you had to read clues and figure out, you know, so-and-so, it's kind of like the game of Clue. So-and-so didn't do it with the matchstick and it wasn't in the library. And then you have to, it wasn't all about murder though but you have to figure out what the answers are and um, then there's always one right answer but kind of based on process of elimination sometimes too so these logic puzzles have been so much fun for us and i don't think we've gotten all the way up to 16 because we've lost interest before that point i mean no child probably wants to sit and do 16 of these in a row but they have been wonderful for our family and i wanted to make sure i included them in our math video here today because logic is closely related to math i would say okay i just wanted to show you one more of these logic puzzles this is game seven so about halfway through the difficulty levels and this one comes with different combinations of fruit so this first one here is a zucchini and an apple so your child just looks for where zucchini and apple would intersect that's kind of the way i describe it to my children like where do they run into each other so i highly recommend looking into a logic game pack like this and it's on teachers pay teachers you can find free stuff on teachers pay teachers you can filter results that way and find all sorts of games and printables but this one i think was about eight dollars and i would say it's worth it it's definitely worth it especially if you take the time to laminate it and maybe get those velcro dots on there that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful for you to see our math supplies and some of our other math manipulatives and activities that we like to pull out for our kindergartner and preschooler. And I expect to use a lot of these supplies as the years go on as well. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel here on YouTube. That way you won't miss any of the new content that is coming your way. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at and I'll see you in my next one.